What's up gamers? Today we're doing a little bit of a change of pace for this channel. I'm doing a zoo tour of the Dallas Zoo and specifically I wanted to focus on inspiration for Planet Zoo players and drawing on inspiration from the zoo because this is a really fantastically designed zoo. I, I can't stress enough just how pretty this zoo was and how impressed I was with it. Right off the bat, there's this gigantic giraffe statue that lets you know that you've arrived at your destination. And then this entrance, it's not really an entrance building. I think this is actually an overpass. Like, that's a road up there. So, very unique entrance. And as you can see, there's Christmas lights everywhere because this was the 1st of December. So, everything is festive. And then the first thing that you'll see when you come into the zoo is all these information booths. There's a merry-go-round, there's a gift shop, and I want to just briefly apologize for the, a lot of the shaky camera work in this video. This was recorded on my iPhone. I don't have a GoPro, but I just wanted to show this whole entrance area. Also, another pause. I'm filming this in reverse because I forgot to film this when I first got to the zoo. So this is as I'm leaving. So I'm actually moving towards the entrance right now. Just keep that in mind. Anyways, I wanted to show all this because most zoos, you're not going to like walk in and see an animal immediately. There's going to be all this like information stuff, gift shops, yada yada. Probably a restaurant, maybe a playground even. Um, this map here was really cool with a nice little water feature, but I, I wanted to show this because I feel like as Planet Zoo players, a lot of the times we just want to jump right into building for the animals and stuff. But if you're going for realism, that's not really what most zoos are going to do. There's going to be all these, just a bunch of buildings for the guests because really a zoo is all about an experience for the guests. The animals, they just kind of live there and do their thing and you know, they have nice habitats and they're kept good care of and that's all great and all. But the purpose of a zoo is for the guest's experience. The first habitat you're going to see when you go to the Dallas Zoo is this little lemur island. It's a mixed habitat. It's got black and white rough lemurs, it's got ring-tailed lemurs, and then it's got collared lemurs. This is a great example of a good entrance animal typically when you go into a zoo you don't want to just like walk in and see some boring lazy animal just laying around you want to see an animal that's energetic that's making noise that'll give your guests a good first impression of the zoo and it'll make things be a better experience going forward uh, here there's a bunch of like little enrichment stuff there's like that little bowl hanging from the tree up there that's a nice little thing that had fruit in it and you could see him climbing up there and reaching in and, and grabbing stuff and pulling it out this is also a little elevated view so there's there's multiple views of this habitat there's a lot of like nice enrichment stuff that you know you'll see the animals displaying a lot of natural behaviors and this is overall just like a really nice habitat it was also kind of interesting because i never saw all three species of lemur out at the same time I saw the black and white rough lemurs early in the morning and then black and white and ring-tailed lemurs later in the day and at the end of the day it was the ring-tailed and collared lemurs. Here's the collared lemurs. Uh, they seem kind of more skittish than the other lemur species I guess. I don't know. I don't know if they were swapping them out between different times of the day. No idea really. Uh, that's not necessarily relevant to Planet Zoo but I just thought I'd point that out. The next thing I saw was this really nice bird pond with a lot of interesting waterfowl that weren't here because there was some avian flu detected somewhere in the state of Texas. So it was empty, but it was still very nicely designed and I thought I'd show it off. There also was this really nice children's zoo area that had some domestic species, which is always fun. I'm still hoping that we get some domestics in a DLC at some point. But who knows how much longer Planet Zoo is going to be supported. I, I really don't know the future of this game at this point. I do like that the goats have a little like climbing structure. That's something fun that you can do for your alpine ibexes and doll sheep. 
the real highlight of the children's zoo area is these tunnels that you can go into. I'm not sure if I, as a 25 year old man, was supposed to be going into these, but there was no one in there to stop me, so I did. And they have little viewing domes in there, and there's like some monkeys. What was the other one? There's like, was it Mara? I don't know. Some small uh, South American rodent. And then there's like, yeah, there's some little monkeys right there. I think those are. What are those? Emperor Tamarins? I, someone in the comments will let me know, I'm sure. And then it also in the tunnel place, there's a couple little exhibit boxes and also some naked mole rats. That would be an interesting exhibit box species. We don't actually have mammals in exhibit boxes, now that I think of it. I'm pretty sure. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong there too. We have bats for the walkthroughs, but th that's about it. So yeah, really nice little building, fun little thing for children or adults who act like children. Next there's this sort of long pathway with just a bunch of aviary style habitats off to the sides. Uh, this one's for the Colobus monkey, which I would love to get in the game, but we don't have it yet. Now I do want to throw out a small critique for this specific section. It's just this long straight pathway with just a bunch of kind of samey looking cages off to the sides. And what this does to the guests is as you're walking down it, you're just kind of walking down this path. And there's nothing that really calls specific attention to one habitat or another. You can just kind of walk down past them without really paying them much attention, which is not really what you want. You want to show off all of your habitats for all of your animals. But the straight runway path doesn't really call attention to anything in specific. Also, before I get too carried away in critiques, that last monkey was a DeBraza's monkey, and here they had a pair of white-cheeked gibbons, which were adorable, and they were kissing, and it was so cute. And then there was this clouded leopard habitat, and here I kind of want to point out a critique I had with the zoo in general. So a lot of the habitats were just kind of small. I mean, they're very nicely decorated and stuff, but this feels small for a clouded leopard. And I ran into the same issue with a lot of the habitats, but that was really about it. This is overall a very nice zoo. But going back to my previous point about the, the runway not drawing attention to specific habitats, this is a perfect example of this because this habitat is all the way at the end of the path and it's very, very easy to miss. And these are spectacled langurs, which I was told don't do well in captivity. So these are some of the only spectacled langurs left in captivity. And these guys are all very old and they're all very cranky. And once they pass away, there's not really going to be any more of them. So this is the only chance people would have to see them. And most people aren't even going to know about that. And then on the other side, there's this red crowned crane habitat. That, that white thing you see in the bushes there, that is a crane. And this is another thing that is very, very easy to miss with this runway track. And there's this sort of East Asian trail-ish area, I guess. I guess, I think all of this was supposed to be sort of Asian, except like Colobus monkeys are African and... But, you know, we'll just forget about that. There's some cranes here. They're not the red crown cranes. You'll have to forgive me. I forgot which cranes these were. And again, I'm going to throw out another critique, even though it sounds like I'm doing this a lot, even though I have very high praise for the zoo. That sort of like cob down view of the cranes is like super uninteresting and not very good at all in general. But then you go into this building and there's a view into the tiger habitat. So there's multiple views. You'll see another view in a second. This one's it's not the zoo's fault for this one the, the sun and the glass but i did get to see the tiger which was nice you don't always get to see them it's all the way in the very back i believe i'm about to zoom in and you can see it just right there so this was the best view i got of the tiger unfortunately because when i went to the other view later in the day i did not see it but apparently they have like five tigers and they swap them out of the habitat that's what i heard at least also in the same building there's this very cool display stuff there's a whole tiger skeleton just mounted there which is cool and they have just a bunch of like 
random Asian stuff. I don't think this is actually East Asian. These are Sumatran tigers, so I think it's supposed to be like Southeast Asian-ish. Here's the alternate view, which is like this path that goes along the long side of the habitat. And the thing I really like about this viewing area is these bamboo poles. So in between the gaps in the poles, there's just nothing there. So it kind of gives you more immersion, even though it obstructs the view more than glass would like it, you get to kind of feel like you're in the habitat because it's like oh that space in between the bamboo that's just empty so technically with air quotations i'm in the habitat up next for the asian animals was an asian small clawed hobbit did i just say hobbit asian small clawed hobbit habitat yes that is correct i'm leaving that in because it's funny otters there were otters in here which they weren't here when i initially showed up but they did show up later and put on quite a show and this is a very nice good sized habitat initially i was like oh maybe this one's small too but there's only two otters in here i think so i think this is a perfect amount of space for two of them maybe could use a little bit more deep water area but as you'll see in this clip here they do seem to be enjoying their habitat and otters they're always a fun animal to see you know look at them go they're so adorable they just swim around and play this is another i guess potentially like good entrance animal i would say is because they're very active very energetic very entertaining to watch this is why sea lions are like my absolute favorite animals to watch in zoos because they will come up right up to the glass and they will actually like interact with the guests which is so cool you can like basically play with them through the glass because they just want to like they're just curious and they just want to see stuff but yeah this was a super cool view next up on the tour was the herpetarium and oh my goodness was this a really cool reptile house this was their little outdoor area for the blue iguanas which were kept inside this was filmed on december 1st so it wasn't super warm outside and blue iguanas are from a small island in the caribbean which fun fact i actually got the like chance to go to that island at some point some family friends let us go and like stay in their condo that they had to share in so i got to see blue iguanas in the wild blue iguanas i believe were extinct in the wild at some point but through captive breeding efforts they've been able to be reintroduced uh, this view of this glass is terrible because of the lighting was just abysmal. There was like a chuckwalla in here or something. Can't see it. But then you go in through the front doors and you're just in this nice little open area. And the first thing that's immediately going to draw your attention is this little habitat for a Chinese alligator. Which I don't have footage of it here because I didn't know where it was. Later on in the day when I came back, one of the zoo staff came and told me that, oh, the Chinese alligator, it likes to hide in the very back corner because there's a heat source back there. And so it just sits there and is warm all the time, which I'm going to use that as a segue to talk about the thing that I liked about the zoo the most is how like education oriented it was is they were just like educational staff just everywhere just like standing around waiting to talk to you so i talked to a bunch of different people and they know all the stuff about every animal they know the names they know their behaviors they know all the social interactions they know like just everything and they just like they just tell you stuff that's what they're there to do and that's really really cool that's my favorite thing about this zoo was just people just talk to you about stuff and I don't like talking to people most of the time, but if you're gonna to talk to me about the animals, I'm gonna to talk to you and I'm gonna to talk to you a lot because I love animals. This is my favorite thing in the world is seeing this kind of stuff. They have some really big exhibits here. Like these are for King Cobras, which why don't we have King Cobras in the game yet, Frontier? Like that seems like a very obvious addition for the exhibit boxes but the exhibit boxes in general aren't super well implemented it, even to this day i feel like they still need to do some stuff to fix them even though for these king cobras a 4x4 exhibit box actually seems like a, a valid size or this 
uh, python, reticulated python, I might be wrong about that, I could be very wrong about that, but like, th these ones seem appropriate size, but for something like a mm, Brazilian wandering spider, a 4x4 four four meter exhibit is just ridiculous, and I really, really hope Frontier does something to fix that soon. Also, here's a Parenti, ni very nice monitor lizard from Australia. Lovely little man or woman, no idea. They also have this cool little themed area, I guess is what it is. I guess this is also supposed to be Southeast Asian themed because in this pit of water, there's a couple of false gyreels and some kind of freshwater turtle, I forget. Uh, again, I've... I mentioned this with the cranes it's like a top-down view so like the top-down view just creates like some unnecessary distance between you and the animals and generally you want to be able to get your guests as close to the animals as possible while also keeping your guests and the animals safe this just like I, you just can't see them very well they're down there but you know it's just not a good view a few more highlights from the herpetarium were these goofy little Asian lizards. These, they're frilled lizards. I don't remember what kind of frilled lizards they are exactly. Another thing that absolutely blew me away was the axolotls. Look at him. He's so cute. Or her. I don't know. I didn't ask. I'm afraid to say I don't know the ins and outs of axolotl culture. Oh, and that's another one. That one's adorable too. And here's a, some beaded lizards in a habitat that I thought was very nicely themed. Also, I guess I didn't get footage of the tuataras. Not that I really saw them very closely, but I did see them. If you don't know what a tuatara is, Google it. I, and it was super cool that they had them at the Dallas Zoo. Coming out of the herpetarium, there's this big, long pathway with this big maned wolf habitat on it. And this is... Maybe one of the less interesting habitats in the zoo. It's very long. And it's it's just very long and it keeps going. After a bit of walking, I did actually get to see them sitting in their little den sleeping. And then later on in the day, I actually got to see this dude up and moving around when the zookeeper was trying to get it to go inside of its building and it, it was not. It was just sitting around and munching on stuff and as someone who works at an animal shelter, I felt this girl's pain. <laughs> Sometimes trying to get these dogs in when they don't want to go is just such a pain in the butt. They also had a giant anteater next door which was a lot of fun to see. Pretty sure these two species get interspecies enrichment in Planet Zoo because maned wolves are generally the most herbivorous canines there are and they're also just not very aggressive and they usually don't eat meat from things that aren't, you know, just very small. So they can be housed together, but both animals are capable of being dangerous, so I kind of like the idea of keeping them housed separately better. Here's a more wide view of the whole habitat. It's just got a big dry moat going around it with faux rock with a lot of bird poop on it. Uh, I feel like that's worth pointing out. Much bird poop. Uh, so do note that if you're making habitats, use decals for bird poop. That, that'll be a fun little bit of realism to add to your habitats. I joke, of course, that is kind of pointless, but there's some uh, little aviaries next door. There were some teeny tiny little monkeys in here with some goofy tiny little faces. I don't know what kind of monkeys they were, to be honest. Then after that aviary, there were more aviaries, and these ones actually had birds in them. There's a Andean condor here. There was like a stork or a crane or something or some geese next door, I don't know. Watching all this footage just, you know, makes me sad that there's not more birds in the game and none of them can really fly. We did get the mutes one announced. That is very incredibly hyped. I am so unbelievably hyped about the mutes one, even though I'm not 
probably gonna build for them right away because I don't have a project where they would fit, unfortunately. And there's some, uh, there's a big one with some vultures. And again, look, look, look at how cool this is. Like, imagine you could make something like this in Planet Zoo. It would be so lit. Because this one's like really big too. So there's just like a lot of space where they can fly around. But the real highlight of this section, the part that was so exciting that it made me skip over all the ducks, was the harpy eagle. I was straight geeking at this thing. It was so cool. And it was right up by the fence too. So I got like a such a good look at it. It's such a cool animal. Even just watching this footage back, I'm still I'm like, oh, Look at how awesome it is. I love it. It's my favorite. This was like one of my favorite things that I saw in the entire zoo. Along with like the Tuatara and some other stuff. It was just this harpy eagle. It's so cool. It's such a cool animal. I'm going to stop freaking out about it now. And then the last thing in all these aviaries was the Seremas. Very cool little birds. They have little like velociraptor talons. Which is super epic. So, you know, these guys are cool. Not as cool as a harpy eagle, but they're cool. I still like them. And then right next to the aviaries, it's actually this insectarium, which mostly has arachnids. But I actually missed this on my first go around of the zoo because it's just kind of like this small building. Very unassuming. There's not like signage around it or nothing. I actually didn't even know that it, it had stuff in it until a member of the educational staff mentioned it to me and was like hey you know this is the one thing that everyone misses along with the spectacled langurs earlier which i did actually see their habitat they just weren't there in the morning they were only there when i came back but yeah this is like very appropriately sized tarantula exhibits like maybe like a foot long and then like six inches tall and six inches to the back that's a normal size for a tarantula exhibit frontier Please take notes and provide us with something similar to this. Just make the exhibit boxes more modular, please, Frontier. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. And with that out of the way, that's the first half of the zoo completed. Uh, this is... We're already over the 20 minute mark, so this is going to be a pretty long video. Uh, if you've made it this far, I would just like to apologize for the length. I know watching long YouTube videos is a little painful sometimes, but hey, if it's not for you, you don't gotta watch it. So the zoo is basically split up into two parts. There's like the African half, and then there's the everything else half. And so going under this underpass will get you over to the African half. And to greet you into this section of the zoo, there is a nice little African penguin habitat. There's tons of just like faux rock work everywhere in here. It's a very pretty section of the zoo. Again, I will say maybe this habitat's a little small, but these are small animals. The thing I do like about this habitat is it does give you a very up close view, both of the underwater area and of the land area. So regardless of where the penguins are, you can get nice up and close and you can see whatever natural behaviors they are exhibiting at the moment whether they're doing funny little penguin things on land or if they're swimming around through the water, you get a good view of it all. And then there's the cheetah habitat. And this is the one that really made me go, uh, this, this is small. This is very small. There's the cheetah sleeping right over there. Uh, but like, this habitat doesn't really feel like it was designed with a cheetah in mind. There's like some like water features in there and there's not a lot of wide open space. There's a lot of like rock features. I really feel like this habitat was not designed with cheetahs in mind, which so that happens sometimes in zoos. You know, you have to put an animal somewhere and you just take the open space that you have and you'll throw the animal in there just because that's the only option. I understand that. But still, this one's like, uh, a cheetah probably shouldn't be in here. I came back later, and the cheetah was like, just sitting there in the middle of the habitat. And when I would talk, it would meow back at me, which was interesting. I don't actually have footage of that, but that was weird. So the African area is sort of split into two areas. There's the Congo area, and then there's the Savannah area. This is the Congo Gorilla Trail. 
And this is the gorilla habitat. One of the gorilla habitats. There's two gorilla habitats here. And this one again had me going kind of like, uh, it's, a, it's a little small. I really feel like gorillas and apes in general should have like a lot of space probably. Just because I feel like these animals, they're so intelligent. They're so close to being humans. And we keep them in like these small spaces for their whole lives. I mean, it was kind of a cold day, so I, them kind of sitting around just kind of makes sense. Especially this was early in the morning. Later on in the day, they were a little more active. But the, just seeing them like all just like curled up in balls like this, it's, it's a little little sad the whole history of gorillas in zoos is just kind of sad in general people always freak out about like sea animals being kept in zoos like killer whales and things like that but for some reason i feel like there's not as much like protest around people keeping apes in zoos even though apes are very close to humans very similar to us in a lot of ways so I do feel quite strongly about the welfare of apes in zoos in general. Um, but there's, you know, only so much that you can do about that. Apes are very, very intelligent. And so you can't just throw them back into the wild because they have to learn wild behaviors from their parents. And the gorillas that we have in zoos are all descended from orphans. So they didn't get the chance to learn these things. So now they're just kind of stuck living in zoos but here's a glimpse into the other habitat this is the bachelor habitat the habitat on the other side was for the family group so there's a silverback and a bunch of females and a couple kids this habitat has just four males living together just a couple bros hanging out as you can see here they're just kind of sitting in the sun because it's a little bit chilly outside so makes sense i did get to learn a lot about both groups of gorillas by talking about to the educators that were around here and I got up close and personal with a few of them this is one of the bachelors I believe his name was Juba and he's the kind of the loner of the group but he likes to hang out near this glass bunker area and he likes to mess with people as you can see there and shortly after this he came and sat right next to me and right after that I didn't get footage of this because I didn't really see it he did bang on my glass too, right at the side of my head, so I feel like I was chosen by him. That's right, I'm special y'all, the gorilla loves me. He tried to smash my head in. But another one of the bachelor gorillas, name of Zola, actually went viral a little while back for doing these crazy antics spinning around in his swimming pool. So that's a lot of fun to see, and you know, as much as I complain about the state of the gorillas in captivity they're doing their best with what they can for these animals and you know i can only ask for that much here we have their nile crocodiles which were enormous and i guess they weren't too bothered by the cold even cold-blooded animals can maintain a decent body temperature when they get to be a certain size and these guys were in fact gigantic then we have the chimp habitat, which chimps, a lot of the same things I have to say about gorillas, also applies to chimps. Chimps are actually closer related to humans than they are to gorillas. At least that's what I've been told. I could be wrong. And again, if I am wrong, I'm sure someone will let me know. But, you know, they do the best they can for these animals. And this habitat really is quite nice. It's pretty spacious and there's lots of things to climb on and things like that you'll see some tree guards around the top of some of these to make sure they don't climb too high so they don't escape because an escaped chimpanzee might be problematic then there's this small kopi area which a kopi is generally refers to a formation of rocks on a hill like specifically in africa they don't use that term anywhere else but there's this big walk through aviary that I didn't get to go in because it was closed because of the avian flu. So whatever birds got the flu, thank you for ruining my zoo trip, even though my zoo trip was awesome. And then on the top of this hill, acting like the king, there's this clip springer. So that's cute, I guess. 
um, there's this whole like rocky area because they like to jump around on rocks and there's these like glass things on the side which I thought were funny which were just to like block it from jumping out and then a little further ahead there's a little outdoor African porcupine habitat which the porcupines were sleeping all day I came back later in the day and they were still just sleeping they actually I'm not sure if there were more than one or not there might have only been one but I didn't get to see any of them because they're nocturnal animals and it was the daytime. So these may be better in an indoor enclosure because you would be more likely to see them, I feel like, potentially, if it was darker. But in Planet Zoo, that doesn't really matter because animals will be awake or asleep regardless of what time of day you set it to. Also, I happened to run into Creepy Dave on my zoo tour, so that was pretty epic. And then there was the whole hippo area, which the hippos, out of all the animals on this planet, they probably scare me the most out of any living creature. Uh, I am a, a huge animal fan. I love animals, but those two brown blobs sitting there in the water, uh, those, those scare me. Also, you saw there was an okapi sign there, so I think the okapi can actually get into this habitat. But uh, it wasn't over here at this exact moment. It was actually around the trail a little bit this way. As I walk over very slowly with my slow legs. But there was an okapi right up next to the fence. And I was like, oh wow, that's pretty cool. And I would again mention the how like small this habitat seems. Except you can see in the back there's like an open door. So there's more places it can go. But it was just hanging out over here because if my options of people to hang out with was a pair of hippos, I would also be hanging out in the opposite end of the habitat. But it came like right up to me. Like this, this is what you want when your habitats is just like being right up with these animals. And like that's what you want to see. That's the best experience is when you can just look an animal right straight in its eyes and like, wow, I was just kind of blown away by this experience just because it was like right there. I could have reached out and touched it if I wanted to, but I didn't because there was a zoo staff right behind me. Here's another view of the gigantic murder boulders. And they're almost cute until they open their mouths and then they're not so cute anymore. I, I don't know what it is about these animals that scares me so much, but they do. But this is a very lovely habitat for them, I will say. There also is a very cool underwater viewing section for these animals. And you go over and you're like, wow, I'm going to see these hippos underwater. And then you can't because the water is gross. Because hippos are gross animals. And so you just kind of see nothing. Unless they're like really close to the glass, you're not going to see anything. And then at the end of the gorilla trail, or at the beginning, depending on which way you go, there's a little educational area where they'll bring out different animals throughout the day. Here we have an opossum, which is just adorable. It's so cute. It came, the dude brought it right up to me a little bit later, and I was just like freaking out because it's just so adorable, and I love it so much. But wait, there's more. I came back later in the day and they had a tamandua out. And it was absolutely not coincidence at all that I showed up when the tamandua was out because they had a schedule on the wall and I saw that the tamandua was going to tamandua was going to be out at 2 p.m. So you better believe I was there at exactly 2 p.m. This dude was so adorable too. He like left before the the show was really I guess completed, I guess because they don't want to put the animal through anything that it doesn't want to do they don't train him to do tricks or anything like that but near the end the tamandua is just like reaching up for the dude like up up uppy and then the dude just like picked him up and took him out because the tamandua was just done i guess but it was so adorable and it was just like right there and i could have touched it but again there were staff there so i didn't and then to finish off the tour of the zoo we have the whole giants of the savannah section i thought we'd save the biggest for last really quick i want to point out those elephant statues you saw for a second 
the ground underneath them was all turf, which I feel like was just kind of like a smart design choice because people were going to climb on those statues anyways. So rather than tell people to not climb on the statues, they put turf underneath it so that when stupid children fall and hit their head on the ground, it doesn't just break open and splatter everywhere. But as soon as you walk in, you're just greeted with this really big, expansive view and you see the elephants right away. This elephant up close is the bull elephant and he's kept separate from the females most of the time because men are pigs, I guess? I don't know. Apparently the, the females only like him around for sexy times. That's pretty normal for elephant society. The females will go around in a group with just the females and the calves and they will have a matriarch leader and then the males will just kind of do their own thing by themselves because they are bullies and they will hog all the food and yeah they're just generally a lot more aggressive than the females so he gets to stay in a place by himself again his place was a little small but i guess they had to save all the space for the rather large female herd that they got going on in the background which there is some cross viewing here so that's cool Here's a good view of the female herd's habitat. Very large and very lovely. Uh, there's a little calf somewhere in there. there. There it is. That's the one male that they have in here. And he's allowed to stay there because he's a little baby. And I guess he's cute enough to the females probably not wanting to kick him out because that would be bad for him. He kind of needs their, their support. But uh, yeah, really nice habitat. And then next door there's a very large mixed habitat for greater kudu, zebra, ostrich, guinea fowl, and giraffes, which I only saw the kudu in this part of the habitat. The birds were probably gone because of the avian flu. I don't know where the zebras were, I guess they were just hiding. But man, these kudu were big. I was thinking they're like deer sized. Nah, they're like elk sized. The giraffes had been kind of sectioned off for um, the other animals for feeding time specifically. This right here is the female. I don't remember what her name is. Most of these African animals had very African names. The male giraffe's name was Five. I don't know why his name was Five, but you already know. I absolutely had to feed this guy. Getting licked by a giraffe was definitely like the highlight of my life so far. I absolutely lost my mind over this. They also had a trio of painted dogs, which was very exciting for me. I've never seen painted dogs before. I haven't seen a lot of animals in this zoo before because I've pretty much only been to the Smithsonian Zoo in DC because it's close-ish to me and it's free if you don't count parking. But uh, yeah, these guys are very cool. I love dogs. And so seeing these guys are just like... It made me so happy, even though a lot of people were calling them hyenas because people are dumb and they need to educate themselves. I don't know. Animals are just my whole life, so, you know, I get upset over these dumb things. There also were a few naughty little warthogs. That one, I believe, on the right is... It wasn't a baby, but it definitely wasn't an adult either. It was definitely a, a small little guy. But yeah, lots of lots of mud wallows and no plants on the ground because pigs will destroy absolutely every plant that is placed on the ground. So no plants for them. And then for the last animal of the tour, here is the king himself, Mr. Lion. I'll be honest, I didn't really get any good views of this habitat. It was kind of hard to see the lions. The design of the habitat was very interesting. There were multiple views of the habitat, but definitely the most interesting view was actually from inside of a restaurant. So I was able to sit down and have myself a little burger, and hypothetically I could have seen the lions, but uh, they weren't there when I was sitting down, unfortunately. The whole habitat just kind of has a big hill in the middle, and so when the lions are on the other side of the hill, you just can't see them, which I feel like is a little, it's, just, it's a small flaw in habitat design. Generally, you would want to have like a slope going upwards from the viewing area so you could see them wherever, 
But it is what it is. But anyways, that's going to wrap up today's zoo tour. Uh, here's some footage of the family troop that I had just lying around that I hadn't used. But if you enjoyed the zoo tour and if you found inspiration for it, go ahead, leave a like, drop a sub. Uh, if you have any advice for how to do this better, because I had no idea what I was doing, let me know what I should do next time if I do another one of these. But that's all for now, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Yeah, 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 y'all thought I was done. Nah, I'm stretching out this watch time, baby. We also went to the Dallas Aquarium, which I did not do a full tour on because we don't have fish or birds, which there are a lot of birds in this zoo, as you'll see. Here's a clip of me and the boys adding a shoebill to our party. Uh, if you don't know, if you bow at them and shake your head and they do it back, that's how they accept you. And that's how you know that you are the chosen one. And because I am very epic, the shoebill did in fact choose me. But yeah, I did want to show this place off because it's absolutely insanely designed and cool looking. It's not even really an aquarium, it's just kind of like a big open aviary with like all kinds of things in it. And I got to see things here that I have literally never seen before and you will probably never see at a different facility outside of this one. Like, for example, this place is one of the only holders of three-toed sloths in the world. I know there was a little controversy that we got the three-toed sloth in the tropical pack earlier this year. Should have been the two-toed sloth, everyone said, because that's what the most people have in captivity. But I got to see one of the only ones in captivity in the world, and it was adorable, and I love it. Another absolutely dope thing that we got to see was this gigantic Orinoco crocodile that I think is piebald. I don't know. It's got like some pigment, but not a lot of pigment. So I don't know if they're supposed to be like that. It is worth mentioning that this particular facility has faced quite a bit of controversy in the past. A lot of the things that I said about the Dallas Zoo kind of apply here, but like exponentially where... It's an incredibly designed facility, but I mean, I'm not even gonna say the conditions in Dallas Zoo were bad, but like this giant otter habitat is pretty small for some giant otters. It's really cool to see giant otters, but it's like, nah, this is too small for giant otters. So a lot of this place kind of comes across as being more for show rather than for the animal's well-being, unfortunately enough. The show, however, is absolutely insane. Like, the, there's a manatee. I lost my mind when I saw a manatee. I saw it off in the distance from above the surface. I saw this giant gray blob moving around, and like, I knew what it was, but like, I was like, nah, there's no way there's a manatee in there. But they have a manatee! And like, it was just the most crazy thing that I have ever seen in my life. And it came up and it booped the glass at my face and it made me so happy that I wanted to die. And so, like, I don't know, very mixed feelings about this place because it's like really, really cool. It's such a cool place, but also eh, eh, questionable about certain things. I don't know. But I'm gonna try and leave the ethics out of this for the rest of the video because really this is all just about inspiration for building in Planet Zoo. Not that you can really build for most of these animals because a lot of them will never be in the game, but there's still a lot of cool things that can be taken away from this experience because, oh my gosh, look at this view. But then every time I have something nice to say about this place, then you have this ocelot in this pretty small enclosure without really any type of like shelter or way to hide. It's very open and these are very shy animals. So it's like, it's just like stuck and it's pacing around in a circle, which is sad. But here's some penguins to lighten the mood. They're actually little penguins, which I don't think are super common in captivity. I don't know for sure. They're a lot less blue in real life than they are in game. Not that I really mind that because I kind of like how like some of the animals are super saturated in game. It just makes them look cool. But yeah, very visually appealing place to be. I definitely have some inspiration from this place for future South American areas that I want to make. 
in the very far future because that that's definitely not coming anytime soon i still need to finish mata how first and then i have all these other things planned but still very cool place they even had a giant pacific octopus which are probably my favorite invertebrates because they're just like and super intelligent for invertebrates and they're also just aliens they don't belong on this planet they are definitely from outer space but yeah super cool at least to look at they, there's yeah i already voiced all my concerns with this place just appreciate the views that's all i will leave you with this funky looking gremlin monkey eating a cantaloupe and once again say thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one have a good one stay safe out there have a good time building all right peace out y'all